Project Nova! Let's say, theoretically, your project car had been submerged underwater. The question is, does the electrical system still work? In this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and repair problems with the electrical system. Now, for Project Nova, I'm primarily concerned with things like headlights, taillights, and brake lights. Basically, I want to make sure that I have power from outside the car, in the engine compartment where the battery is, going to the inside of the car, and then make sure that the lights work. I want to make sure that thing's safe. Once we get it back on the road, we get an engine installed in it. So we're going to take a look at that stuff. But before we do that, it's important to know <laughs> the reason I'm concerned with the electronics is obviously this thing sometimes in its life has been in the water. Either it fell off a boat, it tried to cross a mighty river, or was <laughs> stuck in some flood of biblical proportions. There's lots of dirt and debris and obviously river rocks in there, so sometime this thing was underwater. So what I want to do is come up with an appropriate project name. I've been calling it Project Nova, but I want you guys to let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? What do you want to call it? I mean, it's obviously rusty, so anything rust-related, crusty, rusty, or <laughs> rusty's medicated bump ointment. But the other thing is, I was thinking, because it has been underwater, something nautical, you know, something submarine-y. Like maybe from my favorite, <laughs> from my favorite show with Kelsey Grammer, Down Periscope, we can call it SS Stingray. Or something maybe Disney-themed, like the Nautilus or Captain Nemo, or even Red October or Crimson Tide. But the other thing I was thinking of, and I want, I want, again, I want you guys to let me know in the comments, because this thing is going to have a lot of engine swaps done in it, we're going to try to put the 292 and the Cadillac and the Buick and an LS and all sorts of things in it, because it's going to get a lot of engine swaps, I was thinking Project Swapanova. Make sure to let me know in the comments, do you like any of the names I've suggested? If you guys come up with your own, we'll vote on it and apply it to Project Nova. But for now, let's jump on the electrical system and try to get power from outside the car, inside the car. As you can see, we got a fairly empty engine compartment. There's no battery or anything, but they did have battery cables in this thing, I guess at one time. We've got some kind of new battery cables. We're good, we got that one. And we've also got the ground wire. I'm going to go ahead and stick a battery in there. Luckily, Troy, the guy I borrowed the trailer from to pick up Project Nova, uh, loaned me a battery that we use for the electric winch to drive the or to draw the car up on the trailer. So I'm going to grab that battery, we'll put it in, and I'll show you which wires we need to hook up to try to get power inside the car. Let's go ahead and pop this Optima right up here. All right, now we're just going to set it there. So what we can do, hook up our power and ground wires. We want to make sure that that is not touching anything. <laughs> so we got power and ground. And what we want to do, this right here in the wiring harness, that is the important wire. That's the one that normally goes down to the battery. It sends power, it's connected to this big wire right here, and sends it inside the car. So what we need to do is hook those two together, and then we'll find out if we're, you know, if the wiring harness is actually working. So we're gonna do it very simply here. Nothing too fancy. Yeah, yeah. So now we need to find out and go look inside, see if we've got power to the inside of the car. Okay, we got power to the inside of the car and this thing is actually working, fingers crossed, because you never know on project cars. Uh, this dome light should light up. Yeah, look at that. We actually have light going on inside the car. That's awesome. Now let's find out if the headlight switch, you know, any of the lights go on. So this is the factory headlight switch. All we gotta do is pull that thing out and we'll see if our lights come on. I like the fact that the dome light's working, that's good. So, give that a pull to the out position, to the on position. Okay, no headlights. So now we gotta figure out what's going on. So let's go take a look inside. Okay, I'm gonna zoom down in here. We're gonna turn our light switch off. Let's go look in here, because one of the things that we need to have happen is this thing actually has to have 
a dimmer switch. If the dimmer switch is not connected, or not present in this case, <laughs> then the lights will not go on. So what we have to do is get a dimmer switch from the local auto parts store and plug that in. We can also check to see if there's battery voltage going to this dimmer switch to see if the to see if we're getting power there. But we're gonna check that in just a second, but we're gonna to have to definitely get a dimmer switch because we need one anyway. So if it's missing, we have to have that. So what we wanna find out is if we have power down at that uh, dimmer switch. So we're gonna turn this on and then check the voltage down at the dimmer switch. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and measure the voltage on the dimmer switch. Yep, so we got voltage to the dimmer switch. So now if we put our new dimmer switch in, that should help. Let's find out. So now we can plug in the new dimmer switch, this thing right here that we just got. Let's see. Just uh, for you guys that don't know what that is, you step on that, that's what turns on and off the high beams on the lights. Click, 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 click. So we'll plug that in and then see if our headlights come on. All right, let's turn our headlights on, do another check. So let's go around and check the headlights, see if they're on. Nope, and nope. Let's see if there's anything on in the back. Nope, nothing going there. So now we need to see if we've got power going to our headlight switch, so let's check that out. One of the cool things is they've already done some work on this thing. They were trying to work on the ignition and stuff, and they've already pulled the steering wheel off, and that's going to make it easy to climb under here because <laughs> anybody that's worked on the dash of these things knows that it's basically your typical deal. You're hanging with your legs out the side. you got your head under there, hitting it on everything. But the cool thing is we got a little bit more room because all we got to do is take this, take that retaining nut off, and off our steering wheel comes toss that thing over there now we've got a little bit more room for me to climb under there and i got to disconnect the plug going to our headlight switch so i'm gonna climb under there but this thing is really dirty what i need to do and i'll probably do this for a video tomorrow i need to take everything out of the interior i need to take the door panels off i need to take the seats the front seats out i need to take the back seats out i need to take the whole carpet kit out i need to scrape away <laughs> at all the river debris that's in there and vacuum it all up and just clean it out i might take it back over to the like dollar car wash and just spray the whole inside you know after all pretty bit underwater once but i'm gonna climb in there and try to undo the um plug from the back of the light switch and we're going to test and see if we have power to it and if it does then there's a good chance that that um the headlight switch is probably bad and if it is i'll show you how to change it sorry guys it's kind of bright but uh, we're in the sun here and you know it'd be nice if i had my own shop here maybe i could take this car and work on it in a shop i'm gonna look into that i'm going in okay of uh, stuff to poke your eye out. You need to cut all that stuff off. But I'll go ahead and show you the <laughs> so just real quick, it's probably a good idea to disconnect the battery when you do that. If you touch too many things together under there, there are hot wires go there. I know I have power there because I saw a spark. It's probably a good idea to disconnect the battery before you do that. But let's go take a look. Okay, so here we go. We've got our I'm gonna put that in the shade so you guys can see it a little better. So we've got the plug for our switch. So what I'm going to do is, see this big red wire right here? That big red wire is one I'm going to check and see if it's got power. So let's take a look at that. Once again, I got my handy dandy voltmeter. We're going to check the voltage 
on the plug going to the headlight switch. Because we've got power going to the headlight switch and we also have power going to the dimmer switch, it looks to me the headlights are not coming on. So maybe we have a bad headlight switch. I think I can go get one from the local auto parts store. But before we do that, what I want to do is we can now check the brake lights. The brake lights are independent of that headlight switch. So all I have to do is activate the brake light switch and we'll see if the brake lights turn on. If not, we can check power and everything, but let's just check it and see what happens. Because I'm working here by myself, I need someone to obviously stand on the brakes and Mr. 25 Pounder is going to help me out. So there we go. 25 pounds on the brake pedal. So now let's go check and see if we've got brake lights. I've got one of the plugs, one of the lights out. Yep, we do indeed. So the bulb's working, the brake lights are working. That's good. Check this one over here. Probably hard to see with the sun, but that brake light is also on. So that's good news. So we'll just have to go to the store and maybe get a headlight switch and we'll replace that. I'll show you how we do that. I've gone to the store and grabbed a new headlight switch from the local AutoZone. I can go ahead and replace that, but to do that, we're gonna to have to pull this knob off. And there's a little trick to pull the knob off. It has a kind of <laughs> secret release button inside here, and you gotta grab it from up under the dash and push it and activate the knob just right to slide the knob out. Then it's just a matter of unscrewing it, and I'll show you how to do that. We can go through that whole assembly and then put the new one on. But before we put the new one on, what I'll do is I'll just plug it in and we'll activate the switch and see if it's working, make sure the headlights are working. Now that we've removed the knob from the headlight switch, we have to unscrew the switch basically. And you can see these two little slots right here. I got one here and one here. You just grab those. You can do it with needle nose or anything and just spin those. And basically it's a threaded deal and it will release that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we do that. I use these because they're flat. And it, if it's not locked in place, you might have to hold the back. It's actually coming out fairly easy. I'll go ahead and get that one the rest of the way out. So this is the old switch, it's dirty, very Submariner. So we'll install the new one, but before we do, we, but before we do that, we're going to check and see and just plug it in, make sure that it works, and then we can reinstall it. So here's our quick rele release mechanism, I'm going to show you that. See this button right here, spring loaded? You push that and it will allow you to pull this all the way out. Otherwise, it just stays in. It's got a little receiver groove, and I'll show you what the receiver groove looks like. But there's a procedure for this. So what I do is pull it all the way out when it's in the dash. Then you have to push the button, and you push in just a little bit, and then pull it out. Seems to work really good. But again, it's this spring-loaded button, the top secret James Bond <laughs> Q branch button. And then we're gonna reuse this on the new assembly that we got from the auto parts store. Let's check it out. So this is, our, this is our new piece from the auto parts store. What I like to do is, and I usually take the old one with me to the store. That way you can take it out of the box. You can look at it. Okay, you got a lot of plugs there. Are these all the same? Does it look like the, yeah, they both have little triangles, the re little receiver grooves for that. That's all working out okay. They're all spring, you know. You just wanna make sure that they're the same thing, especially the plug, because there might be two different styles of plugs for the different years. So this looks like it'll work. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in and find out now if our headlights come on. And before we can find out even if our headlights come on, we have to put this back in here. And again, it's triangular, so put it in and you can see the little receiver groove there. Put something behind there, maybe you can see that a little better. A little receiver groove. 
So it goes in the little triangle slot in here. Boom, 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 boom. Now we can plug it in, see if it works. Okay, if she's all plugged in, now the moment of truth. Okay, let's go check the headlights. And ta-da! That one's on and that one's on. That's on. Looks like we got a stubborn one here. Probably just a bulb on this one, but we'll have to take that apart and find out. But I'm happy that we've got dome lights, we've got headlights. Let's see if our dimmer switch works. That one's not working. That one's working. What do we got going on here? Oh. We just had a bad connection there. So we're gonna have to take a look and see. Maybe some dielectric grease on there. I mean, you know, hey, it is a U-boat, so <laughs> it's been underwater. We're gonna have to take a look at some of that stuff. There might be some bad connections, but that's why we're checking all this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fix this. That's This will be no problem. But for right now, the headlights are working, the brake lights are working. We've got that, let's go check the backside. So if I got an old bulb, this one looks a little sketchy, but what I like to do is give it a little rub, you know, put something new on those contact points there. So we'll give it a shot. Okay, got tails. Just, you know, a little bad connection. That's kind of what we expected here, but I'm just happy that we got voltage to everything. So now it's just going to be easy things. You know, there's going to be a bulb that I got to replace. We may have to put, like I said, dielectric grease on this stuff, check the connections. But I like the fact that the wiring harness seems to be working still, even though this thing was underwater, even though we were captain of the U-boat here. So now that we've tested our new switch, it's time to install it. As you can see, we've removed our knob with our tricky little secret agent button there. So we'll put this back in, tighten it up, and we'll have a new switch. It's important to note that we're putting our new switch in, but we are reusing this retainer from the old one. So let's get that baby installed. Tighten it up, new switch, and all the headlights work. It's amazing what you find when you're working in here on the car, you find all kinds of stuff under the seat and stuff. These are, I think, the washers for those lug nuts for the Krager SS wheels. They have a recess in them for the lug nuts. The lug nuts are not supposed to go directly on the wheel. They're supposed to use these washers, so we'll make sure to put these on when we put them back on. There we go. She's all installed. Fancy, ready to go, and our lights work. Now we just need to get an engine in here, and I can find out if we've got power going up to the starter and the alternator. I was told by the guy I got the car from that they actually had the engine in here and it was running, so that's a good sign. Okay guys, what do you think about doing the little things on Project Nova? And make sure to comment, let me know what the name of Project Nova should actually be. Let me know in the comments, find something good, we'll vote on it, and then we'll apply that to Project Nova, and forevermore it will be the official name. But I want to talk to you guys about doing the little things. When you have a project car like this, never look at the whole thing. I mean, it's, if you look at it like this, it has <laughs> it has rust, it needs brakes, it needs suspension, it needs interior, it basically needs everything. And if you look at it that way, it looks almost insurmountable. That's why I don't do that. That's why I do this kind of video where we change the headlight switch. It's a very simple thing, and hopefully it helps some guys and helps them diagnose what's going on. But the important thing is, if you have a project car, set a goal each day. Figure out something that you can do. Like today, I went out and looked at it and said, hey, I want to have power from the outside of the car to the inside of the car. I want to make sure that the headlights work on the taillights and the brake lights so that when I do put a motor in here, the thing will actually work and I can drive it around and it will be legal. That's very important. If I came out today and said, hey, today I'm going to take care of all the body work and paint the car, that's not realistic. And the problem is if you, if you look and stare at this thing and go, hey, that's just too much work. I can't get it all done. You won't be able to. But, stupid fly, if you wake up in the morning and go, hey, I have something little I can get done, and I'm going to get that done. That way, 
You do this one day, you do something the next day, you do something the next day, and pretty soon those things string together and you have something that's actually running and working. Then you can tackle big things <laughs> like the bodywork on Project Nova. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure to comment. Let me know what the name should be. Obviously, I've got more Nova stuff coming up. I also have more K24 stuff coming up. I've scheduled the dyno time. And for the guys who have helped me out on PayPal and are looking for a camshaft or an intake manifold, I've sent out emails to you guys make sure that you respond so i have shipping addresses i can get all that stuff out because i went down and picked it up when i picked up the nova thanks for watching guys